If you're trying to be a great singer, little differences add up over time. Today, I'm gonna share game-changing habits that I've learned after teaching over 10 years to over a thousand students. Ooh, let's go. All right, habit number one, it is better to be consistent than good. Let me tell you something, if you wake up every single day and you warm up and you work on your voice and you eliminate all the little issues that you're having with your voice, and if you do that every day, that will far outweigh the most talented individuals. There are some people that will always be more talented than you, but you can outwork them. I consider myself a prime example of that. I don't feel like I have a, an incredibly gifted or specifically talented voice, but man, I worked the heck out of my voice for 10 years and now I can make it do pretty much whatever I want. So for you, it's so important that you learn to love the process, not the results. Learn to really enjoy the ritual of getting in your car and putting on your vocal warmups. The results will kind of take care of themselves. And that's gonna be so much better than the vocally talented folks that are just gonna show up waiting for, you know, glory to be just handed to them on a platter. Habit number two, warm up twice. Okay, so this is a weird one. I actually learned this when I was doing the breakdown of Michael Jackson's vocal warm up with his vocal coach, Seth Riggs. Now, according to Seth, he would actually warm up Michael Jackson three times a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and then once right before he went on. Now, as a part of putting together that video, I actually practiced Michael Jackson's vocal warm up every day, but I discovered something, which is that I was not good enough to just jump right into Michael Jackson's vocal warm up as being my first warm up of the day. My voice just feels very, very agile, it feels very open right now, but it was so freaking fast. So what I did was I did some of my own vocal warm-ups, did them a little bit more slowly, did exercises that I knew were gonna work for my voice. And then I added in Michaels. But a very funny thing happens when you warm up twice, especially when they're separated by some time. That first warm up may not get you to 100% warmed up, but it's gonna get you pretty close, maybe like 70 or even 80%. And then if you warm up again, right before you go to perform or something like that, that oftentimes you'll already have kind of like a little bit of a remainder from the warm up that you did earlier, and that will kind of make up the rest of the difference and you will sound absolutely amazing. So if you haven't already, make sure that you have a really good vocal warm-up that's challenging to you. I've got a 30 minute vocal warm-up that you can check out for yourself. Habit number three, warm up in the shower. So for one of those vocal warm-ups that you're gonna do each day, I recommend that one of them be in the shower with hot water. Now, scientifically, it takes the water that you drink right now about 30 to 45 minutes for it to circulate all throughout your body and actually reach the vocal folds. But if you're warming up in the shower and if you're doing some exercises in there, especially more open-mouthed exercises, then you're actually letting some of the steam hydrate your vocal folds. Habit number four, neti pot. You would be absolutely amazed how much stirring up a little bit of salt and some distilled water and pouring this through one nostril and then through the other actually helps your singing. The logic works like this. What goes up must come down. So if you have any nasal congestion or some post-nasal drip, eventually that's gonna make it down into your throat and into your vocal folds, and it's gonna give you more mucus that you have to sing through. More mucus means that your vocal break is gonna be a little bit worse, and you may actually end up straining more because there's more stuff for you to sing through. Wouldn't it be great if you could just rinse and wash all of that stuff out before it becomes a problem? That's why I recommend this neti pot that has this nice seal here that you can actually pour it straight into one nostril. It seals against your nostril rather than the ones that you just squirt up into your nose and then you have to wait for the water to come back down. As soon as you start pouring through one nostril, it starts coming out the other side. Just remember to use distilled water. And if you want, they do have like pre-mixed kind of salt packets that you can use along with this. Okay, here it goes. It's totally fine, it feels great. Ah. <laughs> it feels kind of fun. Habit number five, cut the coffee. Now, if you're a person that's already affected quite a bit by coffee, you know, you're a little sensitive to caffeine or something like that, I want you to just try an experiment. I want you to try drinking coffee and then doing your daily vocal warm up. And then the next day, I want you to try not having coffee and then doing a vocal warm-up. Then note any difference. Was it any easier? Now, this is something I had to learn the hard way because I actually put a video together that ran an experiment where I drank coffee and then I didn't have coffee and I did vocal warm-ups and compared. And you can obviously see there's a huge difference. 
E no break today. Most articles that you find online talking about coffee and singing kind of focus on the diuretic aspect of it, meaning that the more coffee you drink, the more you're going to pee, which makes you dehydrated. But for me, it isn't so much that as that it is that the coffee actually creates a little bit more mucus in my throat. And again, more mucus is more stuff that you have to sing through. But if you're somebody that needs a cup in the morning and it doesn't really affect you negatively vocally, then go for it. Habit number six, sing on top of the note. Man, if there's one thing that you take away from my channel, it's that I want you to stop reaching up when you go to sing high notes. Mom, 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 mom. High notes are not actually high. The vocal cords just stretch or they slacken to hit higher or lower notes. And so anytime you're kind of raising things in your throat, raising your eyebrows or flaring your nostrils or something like that, you're introducing something else that's actually gonna hurt you. Instead, imagine that you're singing on top of that note, that way you're always singing it on pitch. Ma, 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 One simple trick that you can use for this is what I call bookmarking the note. Bookmarking the note means when you're having a hard time singing a specific note in your voice, it can be really helpful just to sing that note just by itself. Forget about the scale, forget about the phrase, or whatever else is going on in the song, and just sing that note by itself, even in falsetto. So if I'm having a hard time singing this top note, not able to get there, one thing I can do is I can bookmark it by singing in falsetto. Mom. Then, once I have that in my mind, I can start from the bottom again and just keep that note in mind and magically my voice finds it. Habit number seven, stop obsessing over vocal range. This is one of my biggest pet peeves as a teacher because I see students get so tripped up and so obsessed over being able to hit a higher note than somebody else. But what does not matter is the quantity of notes that you can sing, it's the quality of the notes that you can sing. Because it's not how much vocal range you have, it's how good the notes sound in between. Who cares if you can squeak out one or two extra whistle notes? <laughs> What really matters is how do the notes in your transition sound? Guys, I'm talking about your E4s, F4s, F sharp 4, and G4. And ladies, I'm talking about your A4, B flat 4, B4, and C5. If you're still having some issues with those transitions, you are not alone. But it is a little weird to say that you can sing all the way up to like a C7, but you're still having problems with the A4. So focus on those transition points, and not only is your vocal range going to expand, but your voice is actually gonna sound better. Habit number eight, practice in front of the mirror. Now odds are if you practice at home or in front of the computer, then you're probably not looking at yourself as you sing. I mean, it's hard enough just to hear yourself singing sometimes, but to actually watch yourself and watch your face do all these weird and crazy things when you're trying to sing something can be really embarrassing. But just a quick story from my own personal life, when I was taking lessons with my first teacher, Gene, he had me sing in front of a mirror for the very first time. And Gene would always pick on me because I would always raise up my eyebrows whenever I would sing high notes. It wasn't on purpose, it was just something that my body was doing. But as I said earlier, anytime you're reaching up for notes, even if it's just with your body, then you're probably manipulating something in your voice. So start practicing in front of the mirror and try to keep your facial expression and everything totally relaxed. This is a technique which I call the dead man stare. So rather than kind of exaggerating everything in my facial expression, ma, 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 I just imagine that I'm dead inside. And then when I go up to that high note, I don't let anything in my face change. Ma, 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 Habit number nine. Say it straight, then sing it great. Of all the things that people out there say about speech level singing, SLS, IVA, IVTOM, all the different mixed voice techniques, one of the biggest and most concrete pieces of feedback that you can take from those techniques is to sing as you would speak. But that doesn't mean to exaggerate things or over enunciate them like you speak. Instead, how much tension do you have in your voice when you're speaking? Probably not that much. So rather than really going and trying to sing a note and possibly straining or manipulating your voice in order to get there, instead just say the word, then sing it. One of the biggest places that I learned this was when I was first starting off singing, 
I was a very emotional singer. I was convinced that if I could just sing something with enough power and passion, that it would just eventually, all the technique would kind of work itself out. But unfortunately, the voice doesn't work that way. So what I was really doing was I was singing off pitch a whole lot because I was adding all that emotion and grit into my voice. But if instead I just said the words and said them totally relaxed, then said them on the pitch, then I can start to add in all the excitement and all the fury and all the ferocity that I wanted in my voice. And all of a sudden everything would sound much better. Habit number 10, you gotta let yourself sound bad. Unfortunately with singing, you gotta sound bad until you sound good. That means you're gonna be doing a bunch of crazy sounding exercises. Now the reason that we do all these really weird exercises like the dopey gug 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 or the bratty na 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 is not because they sound funny, which they are, but because those exercises are getting your vocal cords to do a very, very specific things that we want them to do. Then as you get it on that sound, we can start to take some of that weird kind of vocal effect off and go towards a more normal sound. But to take that even further back, so many singers are afraid of sounding bad that they don't sing at all, or they avoid parts of their voice that they think sound bad and as a result, they never get better at them. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of courage to be a singer. So challenge yourself to try to sing in those places that you may not sound super great. Obviously, don't do it in public. Do it in the privacy of your own home, in front of the mirror, in one of your daily vocal warm-ups. What's one habit you've discovered that dramatically improves your singing? Tell me in the comments below.